the Open Data Ambassador presenting and also the city's chief analytics officer. So um, to kick it off um, with just a little bit of an introduction um, for myself and then also for the Open Data Ambassadors program. Um, as Zachary mentioned, I'm Martha Norick. I am the city's chief analytics officer, but in today I am an open data ambassador, along with many other um, lovely open data ambassadors um, that are librarians and uh, data enthusiasts and fellow city employees and people that have been volunteering their time to lead these sessions at Open Data Week and also will be leading the sessions over the course of the entire year at city libraries, um, at schools. If you would like a, an open data ambassador to come to an event of yours or to come address um, you know, any group of people who are interested in open data, we would love to send an ambassador to you. So this is not your only shot at an open data ambassador. Um, so keep that in mind as you're, um, uh, as you're watching today. Um, I also, I served as a community board member um, in Manhattan Community Board 9. So I'm a little bit familiar with some of the questions and issues that come up um, before community boards. Um, and I know that we have some great representation from community boards across the Bronx today. Um, so I'm really excited. Um, I, I, at my community board, when I served back in 2007, 2008, literally I would come home with like reams of paper printed out um, from every meeting. Um, so I'm excited to, to see sort of how boards have evolved and are using technology and all sorts of amazing new things since I was a community board member a million years ago. Um, okay, so, um, uh, as, as, as we mentioned, this is a training that was created by um, the NYC Open Data team, um, a lot in partnership with Beta NYC, um, who we love working with, and we're so happy to um, have this uh, collaboration and, this awesome, and be able to do this awesome event, uh, uh, or series of events every year for Open Data Week. Um, and with that, I guess, should we do, like, maybe we can do like a quick, um, uh, I know we've got a lot of folks on the call, so I don't think we're going to be able to do kind of individual level introductions, but maybe, um, you know, in the chat, if you uh, want to drop in your, uh, your favorite um, open data set, if you have a favorite open data set or a particular type of data that you're really interested in learning more about, um, and we can kind of introduce ourselves um, in, or introduce ourselves to each other in the chat. Um, I would love to hear, you know, what you're particularly interested in or what you would really like to get out of today. Um, and we'll try to kind of tailor, um, tailor to the discussion accordingly. Um, I wish we could do individual level introductions, but I think unfortunately that will take us all the way to three o'clock. Um, okay, so let's let's launch in. Let's. Um, what is open data? Defining open data. Um, you know, I think uh, the way that I understand sort of what open data means is that you know the New York New York City government works for New Yorkers, and as a result, all of our sort of records, all of our work product, belongs to you, belongs to New Yorkers. This is open data is our sort of you know set of uh, information and and recorded. Uh, uh, um, the recorded history of all of the things that are happening um, uh, from New York City, by New York City government, from New York City government. Um, and that information is yours. Um, all New Yorkers are, we're, we're all in this together. And I think that the, um, uh, the existence of this open data set uh, or this open data collection um, really kind of shows the growing importance of data in our everyday lives, in the everyday life of city government, um, and the way and the evolving ways that New York City government can use data um, to help serve New Yorkers more effectively and just all in all operate more efficiently and equitably for um, for everyone across the city. So we're going to talk a little bit about kind of the some of the history of, of how open data was created. Um, I studied history in school, so I'm a huge history nerd. And I think, you know, one of the one of the ways that I came to data was was through this kind of um, through this understanding of data as kind of our recorded history, right? This is this is all of the the, the records of what has been happening, um, and sometimes I think people think of data as like a very recent um, phenomenon, uh, like you know this is you know just since the computer age, but the city has been collecting data since basically the beginning of the city. <laughs> um, so this is if you. Uh, um, uh, you may you may be familiar with the city record. Um, 
the history of the open data movement really goes all the way back to sort of good government efforts um, back to the late 1800s and the progressive era of government reform in the city. If you're also a New York City history nerd, this will probably be really familiar. Um, you know, this the creation of the city record was a part of this uh, was a part of this progressive reform movement um, to share uh, to share public information about what the city was up to, um, what the city is up to. Uh, the city record started publication in 1873. Fun fact, if that comes up on Jeopardy this week, you can thank me for uh, for that uh, sweet, sweet bit of knowledge. Um, and uh, it's still it's still going. <laughs> so you can still find the city record. Um, and now it's online. So you can uh, take a look at it uh, um, at nyc.gov slash city record. Um, in fast forwarding about 100 years or so, we're into the age of the Freedom of Information Law or the Freedom of Information Acts um, that were passed around the country that makes that basically um, say that you can you can request information or request data from the government and the government has to have a good reason not to share that information. Basically, um, you know, if you ask for it, they should share it unless there's a, a very, a very good reason. Um, and this was sort of a revolutionary concept. And uh, um, it became law in New York State in 1974. It was a federal law in 1967. Um, so we are we are uh, we are up to sort of you know recent history here. I love I love all of the stamps and like memorandum scribblings on this image. <laughs> like a good reminder of uh, of how uh, what we all did before email, I guess. Um, and then in 1993, so again, a couple of decades later, New York City released its very first public data directory, um, which made uh, a which made available sort of a listing of the data sources that this that city agencies had available. Um, so instead of you know a FOIL request where sort of people had to know specifically what they were asking for, um, this was a directory of the places that you could you know the the systems that the city was using to track information. So you could you could know that for example there was a um, uh, you know the Department of Buildings has a system called Biz, which I believe stands for the Building Information information system and actually still exists today. Um, so uh, uh, this the public data directory also established a public liaison for each agency. And we'll talk about kind of how that's evolved to now that we are in the age of open data. So um, as as we as we mentioned, the New York City data open data law is now 10 years old. Um, our office will be enjoying a sheet cake from Wegmans in honor of this <laughs> anniversary tomorrow. So if you need a good excuse to uh, eat cake this week, um, you can say you're celebrating the birthday of the New York City open data law. Um, this uh, bill was passed with the um, with the help of an encouragement from advocates, city staff, elected officials, a whole um, amazing crew of, of people, including the borough presidents, um, uh, came together to make this law a reality. Um, many cities have open data laws, um, but New York City's is actually one of the very strongest across the country. It guarantees that the public will have access to information in perpetuity, regardless of the administration. So there's not sort of, you know, breaks uh, when one mayor switches. Um, you know, there's not supposed to be any sort of interruption in access to information um, on the part of the citizens. Um, and a key difference between uh, sort of the FOIL age or the FOIA age and the open data age is that you don't have to ask. This information is just up there, it's available, it's ready for you to, uh, to use. Um, it's shared by default is sort of how we like to think about it. Um, there's been some laws passed since 2012 to sort of uh, improve and, and refine the open data rules, including sort of making sure that there um, is geographic, uh, geospatial information available if it if it's applicable to that data set. Um, and uh, if you're if you really want to go deep in this, this is all in the administrative the administrative code. So um, there's a series of of amendments to uh, local law 11, which was uh, of 2012, which was the law that established. Um, the New York City Open Data. All right, that was our fun sort of like romp through history of open data. Um, so what, is it, what does open data look like today? Um, we have public data available about almost any facet of city life that you can think of, any aspect. Um, this illustration shows some of the 
Um, New York City open data as it relates to kind of the physical envir environment in the city. Um, so where are all the public recycling bins? What is the pavement rating for this particular street? Um, what is the restaurant inspection results for this restaurant on this block? Um, you know, is there a complaint received about an elevator in this, this building? It's sort of, you can kind of see like, you know, if you peel back the, the, the image, there's little pieces of data that, um, that, that are, that are touching kind of like every different piece of this, uh, of this random day in, in, uh, Union Square, <laughs> um, and uh, public data, you know, to better to get a kind of a better sense of what what we're talking about when we're talking about data here, um, there's a couple criteria for what makes a data set um, a data set, I guess, um, as opposed to just information or or knowledge. Um, the first criteria is that it needs to be machine readable, which is sort of a fancy word for like it has to be a table. Um, and if you're familiar with Google Sheets or Microsoft Excel, um, basically when I'm when I say a table, what I mean is like it has to have kind of a row uh, and it has to, it has to have rows and columns essentially, um, which is a format that computers can understand. It can, the computer can kind of read that information in um, and structure it so that you can interact with it. Um, and so an example here would be like New York City Parks has a data set that has one row for every tree in New York City, which is amazing. Um, so each row it represents a tree and each column represents some information about the tree, like the species of the tree, the size of the tree, the latitude and longitude of the trees. So if you think back to, you know, geography, um, there's a point associated with every spot on the globe. Um, so we can say exactly where in New York City that particular tree is, which is still blows my mind. Um, and there are other there are other types of data and there's other other obviously tons of different types of information so you can think about meeting meeting records um uh notes from uh uh, uh what's that called transcripts all of all of that kind of stuff is is it's public information and it's available you know via via foil but it's not strictly speaking data it's not machine readable so for example this map that is like a beautiful archival map of what uh the original plan for central park so the frederick law olmstead original plan for central park you know i can't kind of like have the i can't have microsoft excel open this map unfortunately um so it's not what we call machine readable so that's just a little distinction here when we're talking about what open data is or what data data is as opposed to sort of what falls into cate the category of you know information or public public information but is that isn't data per se um so another criteria is that the data that's published on open data can't be private or confidential um so we closely review data sets when they're being published to make sure that there's no sort of personal information that we're inadvertently um, revealing about new yorkers um, and there are some exceptions to this so for example um you know we publish every um we publish the payroll administration data um for the city so we you know there's i i am in this data set you can look me up um zachary's in this data set um and it says, you know, our name, where we work, and you know, our salary, and that's that's considered, you know, essential public information. Um, but we wouldn't have this equivalent data set for, like, you know, everybody that works at, um, you know, the coffee shop down the street, right? They, there's no sort of vital public interest in publishing the individual, um, in individually identifying information. Um, and we care very strongly and and are very protective of of making sure that we're not. Um, we're not disclosing any information that might um, publicly identify um, a citizen, you know, without without there being a um, a really good reason. Um, okay. So as of 2022, open data contains more than 3,000 data sets and billions of rows of data. So this is a huge data set, um, uh, or a huge set of data sets. Uh, 
And it's managed by the New York City Open Data Team, which is housed at the New York City Office of Technology and Innovation. So um, with the recent uh, uh, with the recent sort of new administration with Eric, Mayor Eric Adams, they've reorganized some of the, um, uh, they've re reorganized the city's technology offices. So we're now all part of one um, cool new organization called the Office of Technology and Innovation. So if you hear us talk about, you know, uh, the Mayor's Office of Data Analytics versus Office of Data Analytics, and OTI, we're all, it's all kind of, we're all one, we're all one team. So um, just some, you know, the New York City government definitely could have used some more acronyms. So we're, we're helping to, uh, helping to contribute to that. Um, and this huge wealth of information is only made possible by the fact that we have about a hundred open data coordinators that are spread throughout city government and every agency or office or commission, whatever you can think of, um, they have an open data coordinator. And those open data coordinators are the folks that we work with to make sure that their agency's data is published on the New York City open data portal in compliance with the New York City open data law. Um, and it's not as easy as just sort of like slapping a data set up there. We want to make sure that those data sets have, um, have documentation, that they are being updated regularly. So it's a big job. And we're really, we're really unbelievably lucky to work with such an amazing network of people that that work so hard to make sure that uh, New York City's public data is, is up. It's great. It's ready to, it's ready to go. Um, Okay, maybe I will take a brief pause here before we launch into sort of looking at the open data tool itself to see um, Jonathan or Brian or anybody if there's a uh, questions that I should um, that I should answer before we move on. We've been answering some questions in the chat, but I think um, we could cover any larger questions at the end. Okay. All right. Oh, some very good questions. Um, okay, let's launch into the New York City Open Data Portal itself. Um, so this is the Open Data website. Um, it is at nyc.gov slash open data. Pretty easy to remember, hopefully. Uh, and it is sort of our front our front door into all of this amazing, um, amazing public data. Um, so right there on the front page and at the front door, you've got a search bar where you can enter in sort of like plain language what you're looking for. If there's a particular topic that you're looking for, like restaurants or buildings or crime or 311, and we'll talk a lot more about the 311 data set in a minute. Um, you can also skip that step and go right to the data itself. Um, so if you click on this, uh, on the top sort of ribbon up there, there's a, there's a section that says data. If you click on that, you're gonna be taken directly to a page that has um, all of the data sets um, to explore. And that looks like this. Um, so we've got a couple different ways to browse uh, data sets. You can look and see um, for, you can look at data uh, data sets based on how popular they are. So that I, I think that that's kind of a really cool way to look at the data, to, to browse the catalog of data sets. Um, uh, the, a lot of the uh, data sets that people are looking at really frequently are related to um, the Taxi and Limousine Commission or 311 is a very popular data set. Um, so it can give you a little bit of an idea of what other, other users of open data are looking at. Um, there's also sort of new data sets. So data sets that have been published very recently. You can browse by category and or you can browse by agency, which is I think a pretty, um, uh, is maybe the way that I use open data most frequently is I'm looking for a data set that I know a particular city agency publishes. I can go right to that agency and kind of filter down from the 3000 data sets down to just the data sets that, that concern the agency that I'm interested in. Um, yeah, so there's there's the sort of agency tab down there. Um, oh, there's all the red <laughs> there's all the red animation boxes that I should have been clicking as we went along. Sorry. Um, so let's take a look at the a specific data set by typing three one one into this search bar. Um, who is uh, by a, by a show of of I don't know like. Jazz hands. How many folks are familiar with the 311 open data set or just with 311 generally? Just give me a wave. All right. Lots of lots of waving. Excellent. Um, so 311 is the uh, 
oops, I just lost my, I lost my spot here. Here we go. Um, 311 is the, I didn't mean to ask, I'm very sorry, uh, Dr. Tapalis, I didn't mean to make you unmute. That was a rogue click on my part. Um, no problem. <laughs> uh, New York City is the sort of, uh, New York City's 311 system is again, kind of like the front door non-emergency number for the city. It's open 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, uh, 175 languages, 3,600 or so government services that you can interact with via 311. Um, you can call 311. You can tweet at 311. You can, um, there's an app for 311. There's all sorts of um, great ways to interact with this resource. Um, and it's a huge data set. There are millions of calls to, to 311 every year, and every single one of those calls is recorded um, as data. Um, so here we go. We're back to our 311 search, and you'll see that at the very top of our search results, we have this 311 service requests from 2010 to present data set. Um, and if you're ever you're ever a little unsure that you're at the right data set, but you think it's a pretty popular one, um, one way to kind of you know confirm that you're looking at the one that you're that you should be looking at is how many other views that data set has had. So um, this 311 service request data set has. 442,000 views. Um, so this is kind of, you know, this is the, the canonical, as it were, data set for, for 311. And if we click into this data set, we'll see that we have this beautiful overview page that tells us a lot about the data. And I highly encourage you to not skip this step because it's really critical information for making sure that um, you're understanding what this data set represents and also what it doesn't represent, which is you know, a, a sort of um, important thing to keep in mind. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go too. So this information page tells you a bunch of useful stuff, like um, how many rows there are in the data set and what a row represents. I think this is a really important thing to, uh, to understand. So each row in this data set, or you could think about it as, you know, if you opened this data set in Excel, um, you would see a bunch of rows and each row would be would represent a service request, a 311 service request. Um, and there's 41 columns, which means that we have sort of 41 discrete pieces of information about each of these service requests. And we'll take a look at what that looks like. Um, we importantly have uh, information about when that data was last updated. Um, so I think when I, I'm not sure exactly when the screenshot was taken, <laughs> I think it was taken a while ago. So don't um, don't panic about the uh, about the dates uh, here on the screenshot. But we know the date the data was last updated. We know that the date that the metadata was last updated and metadata is just a fancy word for information about data. Um, so that's all of this good, good, juicy stuff about how frequently it's updating, how uh, when it was made public, who owns it, et cetera. Um, we can see the update frequency, so how often this data set gets updated. Obviously, there's calls coming into 311 every second of every day, but this data set gets, gets updated once a day. So another good thing to keep in mind when you're thinking about what a data set represents and what it doesn't represent is what time period does this, does this data set represent. So for this data set, it's 311 calls from 2010 to basically yesterday, um, you know, depending on some time that will flip to, you know, the next day and then the next day and the next say, um, but it's not sort of a like live view into 311. So if you call 311 and then you immediately go to open data to look for your call in that represented in that data set, it probably won't be there until the next day. Um, we know how many views and how many downloads this data set has. So that's another great way to kind of assess the um, how, you know, how much a data set is being used, how popular that data set is. Um, and then critically, excuse me, um, we have the uh, open, we have the data dictionary, um, which is a really, really important tool for understanding what the fields in a data set. And we, when we say fields in a data set, what we really mean are like, what are the columns and what information is included in those columns. Um, so you'll notice in this data dictionary, there's one row per column name. Um, so if you think about, it's it's kind of a, kind of meta here, we're like a little flipped, right? We've got a column in the data set that represents the unique key, a column in the data set that represents the date that the service request was created. Um, and each of these columns in this data dictionary tell us 
about what that actually represents. Because we can't necessarily fit all of that really important information into the column name itself, right? Like we can't, um, we can't, uh, um, we can't in the column name, like stuff all of this good, ju good, juicy <laughs> information in, or else you'd end up with sort of like the world's longest column names, um, which is why we use a tool like a data dictionary to communicate that information to you um, outside of kind of the data set itself. Um, but it's really important context. Um, and it tells you, um, you know, it tells you some information that you that you'll definitely want to have before you interact with the data set. So um, let's take a uh, um, let's see. Yep. So let's go back, head back to the data set itself. Um, we've gotten a little bit of context. So to check out the data set on the open data portal, we're going to click this view data link from that information page that we just took a look at before. Um, and it, that is going to take us to the data set itself. Um, does anybody remember how many rows were in this data set from the information page? We can, we can do, uh, we can do, um, uh, yeah, we can do prices right rules. Okay, those are excellent, <laughs> very good, good memories. Um, there are like, you know, many, many, many millions of rows. And I can tell you right now that unfortunately, uh, Microsoft Excel is not going to be able to open 27 million rows of data, um, uh, just sort of, you know, right off the shelf. So we're gonna talk about how to kind of filter down this data set to what we actually might be interested in using to answer a particular question. Um, so this is what the data looks like on the uh, on the open data portal. So you'll see that we've got, you know, we've got columns here that have uh, that have names that correspond to those data dictionary names that we just looked at or those data dictionary columns that we just looked at together. Um, there's 41 columns. There's, uh, you know, each row represents a particular service request. Um, and over here on the sort of right hand corner of the data set, we have some menu options uh, to use to, uh, to sort of interact with this data on the open data portal itself. Um, so, and we'll talk, we'll talk in a second too about kind of like how to get data out of the open data portal so that you can use it in Excel or Google Sheets, or um, if you use Python or R or some sort of like, you know, uh, uh, programming language to interact with, with data, there's all sorts of options here. Um, but we're gonna start with sort of how to interact with it on the website and then kind of like move on from there. So um, uh, uh, let's, we're gonna, we're, gonna, uh, we're gonna look at the filter functionality so filtering is uh, basically saying, you know, we have 27 million rows in this data set. I only want to see the rows that fit the following criteria. Um, so when you click on this filter, it's going to give you some options for how to do the filtering. So you can filter based on any of the column, uh, any of the columns, basically. So what you're going to say, uh, is basically I am looking for any row in this data set where the community board is 01 Queens, for example. Um, and when we hit this filter, um, the number of rows is going to update down here at the bottom um, where it says showing 311 surface requests 1 to 100 out of. So we've gone from 27 million rows, which is an epically large data set, to about 546,000 rows, which is a much more manageable, uh, a manageable set of records, but it's still, you know, a, a, a pretty big data set. Um, so we've we've shrunk we've shrunk our data down, and and if your if your interest is in a particular community board or a particular, um, you know, for a particular agency for a particular complaint type, we highly encourage you to kind of filter this information on the website itself, um, and then export that amount of data, um, and not try to just download the whole twenty seven million records. Um, it's a lot. Your computer will not be particularly happy. Um, you can also add additional filters. So um, we now have updated this filter to say we want all of the rows that um, are service requests that were placed from the first community board in Queens that were created after the first of the year um, and that were assigned to the Department of Sanitation, DSNY. Um, 
so each of these each of these filters are so they're they're additive right so it's sort of this and this and this um it's gonna it's got to meet all three of those criteria um so it's not going to sort of it's not going to give you this or this or this it's going to give you and um uh, and this should, you know, this should hopefully feel pretty familiar to people that um, folks who have interacted with other kind of online databases or online data sets, or if you're, you know, searching for, you know, all of the, I don't know, all of the songs in your iTunes library that are by a particular artist and are, um, you know, from this particular album, it's that same kind of um, concept. Uh, Okay, so we've got a much more manageable data set now. I think we're down to uh, 289 records or so. Um, and once you've got your newly filtered data set, which I think this is actually a different data set, so don't panic, um, uh, you can download that smaller data set by clicking this export button up on the top, uh, this top uh, menu bar. And it's gonna give you some options of how to download the data. Um, a, oops. A very common way to download data is uh, is in the CSV format, which stands for comma separated values. Um, and that's basically um, a, a type of file that has, um, you know, between each of the columns, there's a there's a comma. So that when the computer is opening that in, opening that data set, it's saying, oh, OK, like I can tell that this information is divided um, by commas. Um, so Excel can open comma separated values files. Google Sheets can open comma separated values files. You can load comma separated values files into, um, into uh, you know, Python or R or Google Colab or however you like to sort of interact with data. Um, so but there's some other options as well, including JSON um, and uh, tab separated values as well. So you've got some options. Um, if you are not a person that likes to uh, take data and, you know, and doesn't necessarily want to interact with it sort of like in Excel or on Google Sheets, you can do that on the open data portal itself. You actually do not have to leave the uh, open data portal to visualize um, you know, what data, what data represents or to do sort of um, to interact with the data graphically, you can do that on the open data portal. So we're going to talk a little bit about what that looks like now. So from our data set, we're back to this information page. This should look very familiar. Um, we are going to, instead of clicking view data, we're going to click visualize up here. Um, and on the conf it's going to take you to a page that says configure vi visualization and you're going to be able to create a variety of different charts um, and you're also going to be able to further filter your data set um, if you would like to. Um, so, for example, uh, this is a uh, pie chart of the boroughs for all of the 311 data that was created uh, on March 21st, 2021, for example. So no huge surprises here. It sort of broadly matches the um, the population distribution across the city. Um, and we can see that there's also sort of a set of uh, 311 calls that have an unspecified borough, which is an important thing to, to notice. Um, you don't actually have to provide an address or, or sort of geographic information when you're when you're calling 311. Everything is optional. So there is some sort of small segment of, of 311 calls that don't necessarily have a, have a location associated with it. Um, so something good to, uh, to, to notice now from this sort of like grouping of the data. Um, so we've got, you know, um, to, to create this chart, we're basically we're adding a filter and then we're also at, we're telling this we're telling the computer like I would like to group this information um, by borough and I would like you to count how many rows uh, correspond with each borough. Um, so for those of you who maybe have used pivot tables in Microsoft Excel or something like that, this should feel pretty familiar. We're basically saying, you know, here's a column that has, that represents, you know, what borough this, this particular call um, came from, count how many calls 
came from each borough and then show me that information in a pie chart. Um, I think it's sometimes a little, the, the language around this is sometimes a little confusing. You know, what's a dimension? I don't know. Um, but <laughs> basically you can think of it as, you know, here's a column that I want to group this information by. Maybe that's call type, maybe that's agency, maybe that's borough, maybe that's zip code. Um, and then how do I want to, how do I want to summarize this information? Do I want to add information together? Do I want to count information? The most frequent, frequent uh, activities that you would do here are sort of either counting rows, right, because we want to know how many calls fall into particular types of categories or fall into particular types of geographies, um, or counting, uh, or sorry, or adding um, something together. So I'm trying to think of uh, what the good example would be here, like if you had a data set that had you know, the number of um, uh, the number of trees in each um, community district, for example, maybe you want to add up um, or the number of trees in each uh, uh, or the number of schools in each um, or a data set that's like one one row per school. Maybe you want to uh, sum up the number of uh, school seats um, across an entire district, for example. I'm kind of then maybe that's not the best example, but I think you guys get the get the gist. Um, so yeah, this is this is our beautiful pie chart of 301 inquiries that were created on the 21st of March of this year, um, broken down by or of last year. Sorry, oh, what a time. Um, broken down by borough. We can also make other types of visualizations. Like we can put this data on a map, which is really cool. Um, so here we are saying, you know, the geographic column for this for this data set is location. Um, most data sets that have a geographic information will have this sort of location um, enabled, but not all of them. It's something that we're always working on to make sure that this is better. Um, that every data set that has the ability to be put on a map can be put on a map from the open data portal itself. Um, we can style or size points based on some value. So again, um, uh, maybe you want your dots to be bigger if they represent um, more calls or, uh, or they are particular, or they're from a particular zip code, or um, you want them to change color based on the category of the type of call, all of those sort of, you've got a bunch of different kind of um, visualization options over here, and I encourage you to play around with them. You can't, you can't make them, you can't, uh, you, you're not going to break anything <laughs> playing around with data on the open data portal, so feel free to go nuts. There's nothing you can do that will kind of like, you know, um, imperil the data set or anything like that. So you can play around with some of these options and explore um, and see if there's, uh, um, see if there's, uh, um, particular settings that you really like. Um, and again, we've got the option to filter information up here. Um, so this is all of the uh, all of the 311 requests that were submitted on a particular, uh, I guess yesterday, whenever the whenever this slide was created that yesterday. I think this is actually really interesting too. And I think it um, you know speaks to kind of the interesting um, ways that 311 represents or does not represent what's actually happening in the city at a particular time. Um, you can see like one thing that really stands out to me, for example, is that there's not a ton of calls from from sort of midtown Manhattan, um, which depending on sort of when yesterday was, could make sense. Um, if you think about the population of Midtown, it's maybe more of a daytime population, commuters, people that are visiting um, tourists that are you know visiting Times Square, maybe people that are less likely to use 311 as a way of interacting with city government, either because they don't live here or because they're you know new to, um, uh, or they're, you know, they're only here for the day, so they're not necessarily interacting with city services the way us who live here um, interact with city services. Um, okay, Whew, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fly because I think I'm talking too much, which is a classic, classic problem for me. Um, so here's another example that's a bar chart. Um, this is a DOT, Department of Transportation 311 complaints between, between March 1st and March 2nd, broken down by complaint types. So you see that, you know, street condition, street light condition, traffic signals are the, the most common types of complaints that were filed on those days that went to DOT, but there's a long sort of tail here of other types of complaints as well. Okay, well, that was a whirlwind. I'm sure there's some good questions. Um, uh, ooh, good question. Very general and very smart. Who collects this data? 
Um, that depends on the data set. So actually, I'm going to zip back here real quick, um, if I can, to the information page. So one of the important pieces on the information page is what agency is responsible for that data set. Um, so here you can see that the data is provided by 311 and do it. Um, which means that you know 311 is the is the is the sort of agency or the um, the group within city government that is actually collecting the data. Um, so there's tons of different government operations that that generate data. So you know there's a GPS unit on every snowplow in the city, for example, and there's like some cool data about where the snowplows are going. There's um, you know the um, parks has a data set of every single tree, and they're the ones that are sort of responsible for actually collecting that data um, and you can think about like you know every every New York City government employee um, is kind of a little bit of like a data generating machine right like there we're, we're tracking sort of information that uh, that is being generated as a part of New York City government operations um, or services or um, you know things that the government is doing and that is how this data is being um, is being created um, and and collected and there's lots of different types of systems and we talked a little bit about the kind of the, the public data um uh you know there's there's lots of different kind of like databases and tools across the city um that uh um that collect data from, um, that agencies use to collect data. So I could talk about this forever, but well, um, I am probably again behind <laughs> my schedule. So there's also, you know, in addition to the open data website, there are tons of cool projects or other data tools that have been created um, and built using open data. Um, so one, there's a bunch of cool examples on the open data project gallery, which you can find at nyc.gov slash open data slash projects. There's also a link on the open data website itself. Um, and we take projects from from everyone. So if you have a, if you do a cool thing with with public data and you want to um, show it off or you want to um, have it uh, be available to other pe folks to use, we would love to feature it on the project gallery. Um, and you can see there's like a broad variety of different types of projects that we have available on the project gallery, including um, this amazing uh, squirrel census from 2018, where folks went out and actually counted squirrels in Central Park, which is really great. Um, uh, data journalism about restaurant violations, you know, some cool interactive tools that let you kind of um, interact with data visually. Um, there's tons of uh, maps that have been created by city agencies to make their data more accessible. Those are available at nyc.gov slash maps. So you can see, um, you know, uh, find a COVID, COVID vaccine site or look at crime sort of um, on a map. There's all sorts of cool tools that are available there. And most of those, most of those maps have uh, open data sets that correspond to them. So if you wanted to go and look at the data itself, you could do that. If you wanted to build up your own map, you could do that. That data is all open and ready for you to use. Um, okay, we're gonna quickly kind of breeze through um, some of the kind of, I guess, the, the thought process and some of the ways that I think it's useful to just sort of think about how you're interacting with New York City open data. Um, and it's really kind of about thinking about what question you're trying to ask of an of a data set. Um, so you've you know you've learned a lot about open data as a program, the history of open data. I have been like mile a minute talking at you. <laughs> um, so some of this we're going to explore a little bit of like some of the some of the reasons that people might be using open data to um, uh, might might be using it in the, in the first place. Why are the, why are they why are you here at open data? Why are you trying to learn about open data? Um, uh, sometimes it's just purely exploratory or like I'm just curious about this thing or like oh my gosh I can look at what trees are in front of my house. This is crazy. Um, but sometimes there's sort of a specific question that you're trying to answer and I I think particularly in the community board context, this is like a really good, um, a really important way to sort of think about um, open data. So how do we use open data to answer questions? So we've got this kind of like sequence of steps to, to think through when you're interacting with open data or you're trying to answer a question. And the first, the first and most important question is like, what are you trying to solve? Um, you know, what are you trying to do? I am trying to, um, let's say that I am implementing a program for restaurants that is going to do small grants and loans to local restaurants. And I'm in charge of kind of coming up with how we 
how we run this program, how we implement this program, how do we determine which restaurants should receive funding? So this is, you know, this is a question, an example question that we made up, but you can think of lots of different types of equivalent, um, equivalent types of problems or equivalent sort of tasks that you are charged with, um, with solving or, or thinking about. Um, and the next thing, you know, when we're thinking about how we'd interact with the open data uh, portal to uh, to interact or to answer that question is, you know, what what information exists on open data that could help me here, um, that could help me sort of understand the restaurants in my neighborhood. I can go to the open data portal and search for businesses, search for data data sets related to business, data sets related to restaurant uh, restaurants. Um, I can you know pull up some of these different data sets and get an idea of kind of what's out there. Um, Here's some interesting potential data sets here. We've got the legally operating business data set. Excuse me. We have the open restaurant inspection data set. This is a big, um, you know, a big new program for the city to have to have all of these restaurants be um, uh, have, you know, uh, space on sidewalks or in the parking lanes. Um, we have the DOHMH uh, restaurant inspection results. So those, you know, those letter grades that you see posted in your local restaurant um, are the result of an inspection by the health department. Um, we've got pedestrian counts. There's all sorts of information that might be potentially useful in answering this question. Um, and here are some questions that, you know, specific questions that might sort of get at the problem of like, how do I narrow down the set of restaurants uh, that I want to uh, give a grant to or that I want to sort of work with in terms of this program that we're thinking about, um, which might be, you know, what are the restaurants that have received a grade A restaurant inspection rating in the last year, um, or which restaurants have already received city support, or which restaurants uh, are in the most highly trafficked areas. There's all sorts of different types of questions that you can answer with data, and and understanding what question you're trying to answer is a really important step of, uh, of, of sort of thinking about how you, um, you know, what you're going to do with that data once you find it. Um, and again, this is like a big plug for the data sets data dictionary um, to understand sort of what data represents and what it doesn't represent. Um, these data dictionaries are, are, are critical. So for example, the business acceleration program, um, if we read the description, we discover that it actually doesn't provide direct financial support. It provides other types of support, um, you know, support with, um, with uh, you know, uh, working with uh, inspection uh, inspectors, like figuring out how to get your restaurant on open, et cetera, but it doesn't actually give grants the way that you maybe would, would uh, you might assume that a business acceleration project would, uh, would, you know, give businesses money, but actually that's not what this program does. And we can learn that from this description in the data dictionary. Um, okay, once you've ideated, if you have, okay, uh, there we go. So once you've got your data sets identified, then we kind of dive into this analysis part, right? We, we, we say, what are, you know, if I'm trying to answer a question about like, you know, what restaurants in my neighborhood um, have uh, our compliance with the open uh, restaurants uh, uh, roadway compliance, you know, process. Maybe that's a criteria that I want to use to determine which restaurants I'm going to support with this program that I have invented. <laughs> um, I can see that, you know, out of all of these, out of all of these restaurants in the Bronx, that we've got 598 of them, about 20% of the of the open restaurants that are in compliance with the um, open restaurant inspection um, or, or that's compliant for sort of having a roadway, um, a, a roadway seating area, excuse me. And, uh, um, and this, you know, we can, you can produce this analysis using, using Microsoft Excel, you could do it with, um, uh, with Google Sheets, you could do it with, um, you can do it right directly on the open data portal, like we just looked at the visualized tool. Um, and, you know, we create visuals and all of this stuff is important and, and helpful and sort of, you know, making your case or, or helping you decide what, um, what the right course of action might be. Um, we can, you know, answer other questions like how many of the restaurants uh, have gotten A ratings, um, and you'll see that actually there's a lot of restaurants that don't necessarily have a rating yet, um, and that could mean that it's a new restaurant or it's a restaurant that doesn't have um, uh, that. Uh, um, 
there's, you know, some values in here that, that are like a pending value. So maybe you don't necessarily want to just limit it to restaurants that have an A rating. Maybe you also want to keep in mind that there are restaurants that haven't been inspected yet um, or that, uh, you know, are, are being re-inspected. Um, this is all sort of hypothetical, by the way. Like we're, we're, we came up with this example as a way to kind of like jog your thinking about um, questions that you might be able to answer with this open data set. But, um, you know, just disclaimer, this is this is like a, a made up example. Um, but hey, we've answered some questions. We've got some options of ways to, you know, make decisions or provide recommendations to people who, uh, uh, you know, might ultimately kind of be deciding how to proceed forward. Um, and that is a quick and quick, very quick <laughs> walk through sort of how you might think about using open data to, uh, to answer particular questions. Okay, um, we'll have some time for Q&A and I can stick around for Q&A um, for as long as folks need. Um, but I think at the beginning I said, you know, my, my, if any, if you get nothing else out of this session, I hope that what you um, understand is that you can get in touch with us about anything you have, any question you have about open data. Um, we have a help desk, um, nyc.gov slash open data slash engage. Um, I know sometimes these these government forms can feel like I am sending this into the void and I will never hear from anyone again. But I can tell you for certain that when you are sending us a message on this open data uh, uh, portal, you are actually corresponding with Zachary Fader. So <laughs> he is the man behind the curtain here, um, along with all of our amazing open data staff, Kari, Malgosha, um, uh, Al. Okay, there's a whole there's a whole crew of folks that are that are actual humans with actual uh, time dedicated to answering these questions. So don't feel like you're kind of just like throwing it into the void. Um, so we can answer all sorts of different types of questions. Like I am looking for this particular type of data set and I can't find it. Um, and if it's a data set that fits the definition of New York City open data, we actually, we, we, the agencies have to say, oh yeah, like, we'll we can provide that data set or or provide a public explanation of why it's not possible to create that data set. If it's like a, a set of data that they don't collect or something like that, um, you know, it's not always possible, but if you have an idea for a data set or you think there should be a data set available on a particular topic, send us a message about it and you might you might create a new data set. And yeah, get in touch with us um, if you have any questions at all about using open data. If you'd like to have an open data ambassador come to your community board or your local library or, you know, the after school program that you volunteer with, whatever, like we're here and we're excited to um, to share this cool resource and knowledge with all, all of y'all and anyone else. We have ambassadors that speak other languages as well. Um, so you can get an ambassador training in a language other than English. Um, uh, so if there's a, you know, if you have a group that um, would like a would like a training in a particular language, we'll do our very best to accommodate that. Um, we have ambassadors that speak lots of different languages. So, um, okay, I think I'm going to stop talking and let you guys ask questions. I'm sorry that you've just been listening to me, to me talk nonstop for one hour. <laughs> I think it looks like Jonathan and Jonathan and Brian and Kate did an amazing job answering questions as we went. Go ahead and unmute yourself if you want to ask a question live too and not in the chat. That's that is also totally, totally fair game. I have a question about the data sets. Yeah. Uh, so early at the beginning of the uh, meeting, I had a question about um, page views information. And as you were um, conducting the meeting, I realized that it's under the nyc.gov web analytics. So I just want to see how many page views my community board gets as opposed to other community boards. But that particular data set seems to be limited to the top 2,000 most visited pages on nyc.gov by month. And I presume that my community board is not in the top 2,000. Don't sell is yourself short. <laughs> Um, that's an interesting question. I, you know, that sounds to me like if it's a data set that isn't already provided is a great fair game data set to be produced by, uh, by, uh, by the city so that folks can understand how often people are visiting particular government websites. So um, let's, uh, we will, we will, we'll make a note of that one. Um, that's a really interesting data set. Um, and I do think it would be really uh 
it would be it would be interesting even beyond the top 2000 websites uh, uh, or top 2000 most visited websites. Um, although I don't think you should sell your community board short. Maybe you're in the top 2000. 2000 no, is checked. a lot. I checked. Oh. The only one, there was a Brooklyn one that was um, oh. sort of made it. Wow. Yeah, it Who would cares be about Brooklyn? For, it would be helpful for the um, community boards. That way they could see where they can allocate their resources for um, website management. You know, should they be more on Facebook? Should they be more on Twitter versus the actual web page on nyc.gov, et cetera? Yeah, that's a great idea. Thank you all. Have a great week and uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you so much. Thank you. This was awesome. Yay, good. I'm so glad. Thank you so much. <laughs>